Yo, yo, welcome back. Today, we are looking at the TV receive app on the Portapack H4M or H2. This has been a fun video to do because if you don't know, TV signals have changed dramatically over the past uh, few years, uh, I guess decade really. And a lot of areas like my hometown here uh, no longer offer analog TV signals to be received. Uh, because everything has, has gone digital. Um, you know, a few years ago, a lot of homes were uh, changed from the old rabbit ears antennas. Um, if you're too young for that, then pretty much it was a antenna, uh, like the one on the Portapack H4 right here, that would be rabbit ears with two of them, and then you would adjust them uh, to receive TV signals um, in your area. And that has changed because of the digital era, and everything going, obviously, digital. So cable boxes, satellite uh, imagery, um, all the way to streaming service. So we really don't deal a lot anymore in the analog realm. But some countries and some areas still offer analog TV signals. Uh, I'm going to say maybe some really small remote towns offer it still that haven't gone fully digital yet. Um, if they haven't, more than likely they will be going digital very soon. But with the Portapack H4M, we can go into, we're gonna just dive into this real quick. We're gonna hop out of here to the receive portion of our Portapack H4M. And we're gonna hit analog TV from the, towards the bottom. Last week we went over the WeFax. Now I am skipping FM radio for now and AFSK because neither of those apps are working. AFSK has not worked for quite some time. You can go to the uh, wiki uh, slash documentation on the Mayhem uh, GitHub and look at all that information of why it is not working. And if you have some insight and some help that you want to throw in there, by all means, join their GitHub and help them out. Uh, so we're going to skip FM radio as well because that is that is also not working. Last time I checked and I'm running a pretty new uh, version of Nightly and it is still not working unless I'm doing something wrong. But Simplified FM radio is just tuning into the FM radio. So not anything fancy there. Going into analog TV here, we can see right at the bat that we have TV, we have the frequency, and right now we are transmitting on VHF. The frequency I am on is 176.25. And then of course we have our LNA and our VGA and then our volume. And then we have the steps that we can tune in to. And then of course, after that, if we scroll over, we can also turn on our amplifier if we need to. Um, but since the transmitter I am using is right next to my Porter Pack H4M, I will not be doing the amplifier. Now you can barely see here on this little screen, some imagery of me being captured from the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 going to the Osbot HDMI to USB-C converter out of there going to this little analog transmitter that I found on eBay. It is a home TV analog transmitter station. It has HDMI up here on the top. And we also on the side, we have RCA, yellow for video. We have red and white for audio. To run this thing, it's got some simple instructions here on the front. It's got a little OLED screen right here that we can see. We go power on, this is USB-C powered at five volts. Um, so to run a HDMI signal, which is what I'm running right now, we slide my K1 slider and my K2 slider to the right, as our instructions say right here. And then that gives us our HDMI signal re readability to then be transmitted to uh, whether VHS, VHF or UHF. Now to switch those signals, I can hold down menu here, go to UHF, we can then go to and to select that, we're gonna hit menu again, and then we can go to P and then N. Now I'm not sure I'm not entirely sure what P and N stand for. My guess is gonna be PAL and NT NTSC, which are the uh, kind of codex of analog TV. PAL was European, and then NTSC is US based. But for some reason, when I transmit on uh, NT or N, um, I am not getting a signal. So uh, after that, we can then select our frequency. So, and there we have set, we have set frequency that we can choose from from the common standard um, 
channels that were established way back in the day for VHF and UHF TV signals. And then we have our SIF, which is kind of our steps of what that signal is going to be kind of jumping at as well. Now, this also carries a FM tone, if you will, that is carrying the audio signal. So most of these will then know if I'm on channel 13, I need for VHF, I need them to be on this frequency and then my audio tone is going to be on FM at this frequency. So not a lot of that is going to play into the port pack H form really. Uh, so let's go back to our uh, VHF. We're going to let that kind of go there and then we can kind of see some slight imagery. It's very kind of difficult to see. Uh, I've had a hell of a time trying to get this going um, for the past hour or so. You can kind of see me uh, and it's kind of going in this wavy pattern and if you're old school like me and you've been around analog TVs, you know that back in the day to tune your TV, that's kind of how the waves were being transmitted was in this diagonal version for you to get that clear signal. And then you kind of either had to hold the rabbit ears at a certain point, add foil, run, you know, um, external lines out of your house, do all sorts of um, voodoo to get a proper signal if you were in a really crappy area where your VHF and UHF was not really receivable. That is pretty much that for this app. It's super fun. Um, I'd be curious to know if anybody else in the US or in Europe, um, comment down below if you are able to get a clean analog TV signal on your port pack H4M or H2. Um, and if you can join my Discord and just share those clips, if you will, because uh, I would love to see how they turned out. Um, because again, you can kind of barely see me just going through this little diagonal form here. Uh, I will put a link for this guy right here in the description below, um, as well as anything else that I have used in this video to kind of get this going for you guys. And if you're interested in this kind of stuff, you know, uh, check out PCBWay, uh, today's sponsor for this video. PCBWay offers some really cool, unique, just simplified PCB design and 3D printing services as well as CNC services and a plethora of other services that we discussed here in the past. Use my code in the description below to gain some dollars off and it helps me out. And I'm sure that you guys can find something there on their shared project side. If you're interested in that, if you don't do any kind of PCB designing, uh, check out their shared project side because they have a lot of really cool uh, projects that the community has done and has offered uh, pretty much for free minus the cost of the actual PCB printing services from PCBWay. Check that out. They have been really great to work with. They've simplified a lot of things that I have done uh, for this channel and usually if I get a project printed out from them I then in turn keep one up one of those items and then I gift away the other four or I will uh, Do a giveaway on my discord So uh, join my discord because you never know when I can drop some giveaways I just did a giveaway uh, for the version one of the evil crow rf uh, So congrats to the individual that won that the week prior to that, I did one for, uh, it was the Logic Analyzer by L. Dr. Gusman, I believe. Um, so congrats to, the, to those two individuals that won that as well. So again, uh, Peace of Beeble has been an incredible help for this channel because they allow me to also give back to you guys. Appreciate you guys watching. Um, it means a lot to me. Thank you all for your support. If you haven't, uh, subscribe, like, comment, and do all that fun stuff because it helps this channel out and it helps me continue to dive further into this beautiful realm of uh, RF, uh, SDR, and um, just radios and hacking and all that fun stuff. So uh, thanks again, guys, for your time. I appreciate it, and I will see you guys in the next video.